Welcome back everyone to Boring Build Friday. Today we're going to get our Yukon all finished up. If you don't know what Yukon I'm talking about, link's up there. Let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is put the bumper together. Lots of satisfying clicky parts here. Snap our fog lights in. Put our lower grill in. Line up all the tabs. Clip them in. Put our Christmas trees in the corners. Now we put our absorber in. Screw it in with the little plastic screws. And we'll put our brackets on the bottom. Put our J nuts on for our lower valance. And now we'll put the lower valance in. Start the clips, don't clip them all the way in. Sometimes you gotta shift it side to side. So once you get them all in, snap them in. Bolt in two corners. Put our J-nuts on for our grill. Now we can put our grill on. Flip it over so we can make sure all the clips clip in. Now we put our headlight on. Plug in two plugs. Clip it into place, put our bolts in, gotta align this bottom edge here. Hey. Too far. Let's start over. Push it out of the clip on the bottom, so I said to clip it back in. And this time, go with a little less force. Got it that time. We'll put our bumper bracket on. And put the bumper on. Carefully. So we don't have to explain to the painter why he's got to paint it again. Put the top in. Clip the sides in. Now we start bolting it up. Put the wheel liner in, everyone's favorite part. I'll put our moldings on. The body guy put the two sided tape on, so let's hope they stay. Remove our factory molding alignment system. Now 
I'm going to put our nameplates on our tailgate. I know, a lot of you guys don't like these. But I just put it back the way I found it. The Yukon on the other side. Maybe. Depends on if I can spell it right. And our little flex fuel badge to let you know you can destroy your vehicle in an effort to save a couple cents a gallon. Now we'll put our GM badge and our Yukon on our door. Remarkable. No spelling errors. I'll put our wiper on. I don't know why I didn't do it before. It was lazy. Let's bolt it in. Run the washer hose. Check and make sure it works. And Mr. Spotty's getting a bath. Snap the cover on. I can put the SLT nameplate on. Pull off our factory alignment system. Now we're going to put our rear seat back together. just clips in, kind of rotates up underneath. Probably got snagged on something and pulled apart. Not from the accident, but all the people with accident car bias will say that, oh yeah, that was definitely because it got hit. Whatever guys, I'll fix it. So now onto the exhaust. Pull off our rubber baby buggy bumpers. Exhaust hangers, whatever you want to call them. Should have been wearing a hard hat. Right safety guys, it didn't get me. I'm gonna pull our sway bar off. Thanks to the loaders at the auction. Our bushings are a little torn up and the brackets are bent. But we need it out of the way anyway because we have to drop the rear end down to get this exhaust out. Pull the panhard bar off. Pull the shock out. There's a jack stand underneath it so now I can just lower it down. Pull the spring out. Now we can take the exhaust out. Kind of have to go back and then drops down and then come forward. In the pile. Now we got our new used one. Just put it in the opposite way we took it out. Put it up in its rubber mounts. A lot easier with two people, but the crossfitters were crossfitting, so we'll figure it out. Now 
and put our spring back in for the second time. This is pretty much all the stuff that we did on the trailer to make it drivable. I had to kind of do it again. Pull our shock back up. Put our arm back in there. Kind of pry the rear end to the side to get the bolts to line up. Also easier with two people. Now we can bolt our exhaust to our crossover pipe. One of the bolts came out nice. This one, making my own threads. Oops. That didn't work out so well. So, we'll fix it. Figured I'd give it a shot. Those bolts are just splined in there. You knock them out, kind of like wheel studs. Bolt our good one back up. Slide another bolt in there. Put a nut on it. Done. Crisis averted. I'm going to change the sway bar bushing on the driver's side. Kind of mangled. Took these off of our parts Yukon too. They're not expensive, but why spend a couple bucks if you don't have to? In the pile. Put our sway bar link up in the frame. And we bolt our bushing up to the rear end. Tighten up the sway bar link in the frame. And put our wheel liner in. Out of the way, Mr. Spotty. Put all our bolts in. And our couple clips. Now we're going to change the sway bar links. They're broke. Not part of the accident. Unless you're one of those people that swear everything is from the accident. This is the long way, using a die grinder. This is the way I was taught. There's a faster way. Using my favorite tool. Just gonna break off that plastic. The bolt's basically rusted into the plastic, so I'm just breaking it loose. Takes a minute or so to cut it off with the die grinder. Takes a few seconds to cut it off with the air chisel. Now we can put our new sway bar link in there. Start the nut, but don't tighten it up. Go to the other side first. Otherwise, it's a pain to get the other side in. Casey's never done sway bar links before. Now you can tighten them up. Now, something else is not from the accident the standard LS platform engine leak. It's the oil cooler block off plate or if you have an oil cooler it's the oil cooler gasket they always leak they're cheap two bolts just take the two bolts out throw the gasket in tighten them up you're done while we're here we'll change the oil all my cars always get an oil change it's cheap insurance 
You don't know when the last time it was done was? Now we have to go get the one inch impact to tighten up the oil plug and oil filter. I got was taught at Chiffy Lube. I'll put the oil in. They didn't teach me that at Jiffy Lube though. Now we're gonna program our key fobs, brand new ones. Pretty easy. Just go to the menu. Program the remote. Hold the button. Press lock and unlock on the remote. Hold it till you hear a beep. Hit the check mark. Check and make sure it works. Now the important part. Mode starter works. Perfect. Okay, now we're onto the rear end of the truck. Yeah, get this rotor just right. A little off. That looks like a good spot. There we go. Just that easy. Now we can change the tire. This was a tire that was off the parts truck, so we're gonna put our new tire on our good wheel. So the truck will have a matching set of four. I match the brand and size. And they weren't cheap. In the pile. This concludes our CrossFit session for today. Now we're gonna mount the tire. Almost as easy as the brakes. Throw it up on the balancer. Had to video it because otherwise people would accuse me of not balancing tires. Now pull the left rear wheel off. We'll do this brake job in slow motion. Oh look, more Loctite. Surprise, surprise. Caliper in. Take the brake pads out. Take the caliper bracket off. Pull the rotor off. In the pile. Fancy high performance. Put our new rotor on. Put our bracket on, and we can put our brake pads in. Had to clean up a little rust on our caliber bracket. Now we can slide the caliper in. And we'll put the wheel on. Now while we're here, we'll relearn the TPMS system. Pretty easy, just go to the menu, hit the check mark. Now we'll trigger each wheel. Left front, right front, right rear, left rear. The lights light up in case you forget the order you're supposed to be going in. Now we can do the front end. And some more high performance brakes to throw on. And some suspension work to do. 
standard Yukon Tahoe package. New lower ball joints. They come bad from the factory. Okay, rotor's not playing nice. We'll do it the right way. Run the bolt in there, push the rotor off the hub. The other way is more fun. We'll save the hammer swinging for the ball joints. Disconnect our ABS wires. Unbolt the upper ball joint. Knock it out of there. Unbolt the lower ball joint. Put it back on a couple threads. Tap our drive axle out of there. Slide our knuckle off. Mr. Air Chisel. The tops are folded over, so I'm just unfolding them. And I'll just smash that ball joint out of there. We could use a press, but what fun is that? Besides, this is also anger management. Stress relieving. Put our knuckle back on. Bolt the lower ball joint up. And then bolt the upper ball joint up. Snug up the drive axle. These are good for like 50 horsepower. Put our bracket on. Put our brake pads in. Yes, they're new brake pads. Put our caliper on. Put our tie rod end in. So the brake rotors are rusty. The car was probably sitting at the auction for a while. And they weren't going to clean up. So that's why I changed them. Brake pads were at like 40%. So since I'm there, change it all. On the driver's side. Get the tie rod end out. Caliper off. Hang it up. Take the bracket off. Take the rotor off. Unbolt the upper ball joint. Unbolt the drive axle. Unbolt the lower ball joint. Tap the drive axle out, remove the upper ball joint on the lower, pull the knuckle off, air chisel over the ends of the ball joint so it'll come out of there, smash the heck out of it. I win. I'm going to press our new ball joint in. Put our snap ring on the top. I'll put the knuckle back up. Bolt the lower ball joint in. And the upper. Run our ABS wire, tighten up the drive axle, put our fancy brake rotor on, 
Put our caliper bracket on. Put our brake pads in. Our caliper on. Now we're straightening out the brake hose. The metal bracket was a little bent from when the sway bar went up into it. Tighten up our tie rod end. Put grease in all of our fittings. Put our tire back up. And we're ready for a test drive. I've already put about 200 miles on it. So far, any parts that fell off fit in the back of the truck, so we're all good. It's only when the big parts fall off you gotta worry. It's a pretty nice riding truck. Way bigger than what I need, but I don't mind driving it for a little while. goes down the road straight. It is going for an alignment. Hasn't had one at this time. So as far as parts go on this, we used the right front door, the right rear door, the hatch, and the right quarter all off of our parts truck. The rear bumper and the right taillight were new aftermarket. The bumper that was on my parts truck had sensor holes for the backup sensors, so it wouldn't work. And the taillight I had used on the other build. I also used the wheel for the right rear, along with some suspension parts. All came off the parts truck. Got a new key fob, sway bar links, brakes, ball joints, all that stuff was new, all the maintenance stuff. And that was pretty much it. That was all I needed for parts. So everybody always wants to know how much time I have invested in these builds. Well, we'll go by video. So the first video, I took it off the trailer, pulled the interior out of it. We had to make it drivable by changing some suspension in that rear. So that took us about an hour. In video two, we pulled the side, swapped the doors, and started cutting it apart. We had about four hours invested in all that. In video three, we removed the quarter from the parts truck, swapped over the gates, and that took about five hours. In video four and five, we trimmed out the quarters, cut off the old stuff, put on the new stuff, welded it all up, and got it prepped for paint. Those two videos together was 18 hours. After we handed it off to the painter, we got it back, and in video six, we put it all back together. That took about four hours. So in video seven, is this video. We finished putting together the rest of it and did all our mechanical work. That took about three hours. For a grand total of 35 hours I have invested in this truck. The paint body guys had about another 15 which means 50 hours total to build this truck start to finish. So everyone wants to know how you can buy the vehicles that I rebuilt. And my answer has always been, drive past my house, they're at the end of my driveway. Occasionally I'll throw them up on Craigslist, but this one I said I'd offer to YouTube, and the best way for me to do that is to post them on Instagram. So follow me over there, links down below, also the link to my email. I could post more pictures, more details, and give you quicker updates than posting videos on YouTube. You can also private message me there, and work out any details if you're really serious about purchasing the truck. If you're not local, I'll be happy to pick you up at the airport and you can drive it home. You can also have it shipped out to you if you guys want to arrange that. Now, I don't have a title yet. I'm waiting for it to come back from the state. I expect it back in two to three weeks. When it comes back, there'll be a clear Illinois title with a rebuilt brand, which means you don't have to go for any more inspections. It's just rebuilt branded because it was one salvage. So check with your insurance companies about insuring a rebuilt branded vehicle. So here it is, almost clean.
I tried, but it snowed and I had to get it home. I could have washed it again, but it was eight degrees when I got up this morning and I was not about to wash the truck and turn it into a block of ice. Got a little snow packed in the grill there. Testing out the four wheel drive. It works. Personally, I like the tinted windows. I think they make the truck look pretty good. The interior stayed pretty clean, even if the outside didn't. It does have aftermarket heated seats, and they do work. At least the driver's side does. I don't sit on the passenger side. There's the back. No third row. Not that you really need it. Just kind of line the kids up underneath and pull the cargo cover over the top. Works for me. There you go. You can put way more than three kids under there. So the build is done and I'm sitting here in the driver's seat. That can only mean one thing. It's time for everyone's favorite game. What's in my console? So let's find out what's in the console. Don't you hate it when people leave a bunch of garbage in their center console? More. Ah, bolts, standard. Oh, Loctite. Should be good for one bolt on this car. There's that GMC emblem I was missing. It's probably annoying a couple of you guys. Let's go put that on. litter. That looks like it. So like this video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see what I've got coming up next. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Should probably clean that. I gotta go pick up my mess. So there's my little four-wheeling expedition, how I got the snow packed in the grill. Hill's a little steeper than it looks, 